Chairman, Mr. Mayor, I should say. And thank you for that introduction. I would expect nothing less. Thank you very much. It is, of course, a great pleasure to be able to address you, as Roger said, a few weeks before a crucial general election for the people of Wales. It is a particular pleasure to be here after five and a half hours on the train from Aberystwyth. Uh, Mark unfortunately mentioned my 25 years work in Ceredigion. Um, I wish he hadn't said that. It reminds me of the, an encounter I had with the ticket collector on the train last night, who when I came to buy my ticket asked whether I was over 55 and whether I would qualify for a concession. <laughs> uh, a great disappointment. He wasn't one of my constituents. Well, I want to talk this morning about something that's not on the agenda. I want to talk about our rural communities and the need for people to continue to stand up for our rural communities in Westminster. For years we have seen urban-centric governments, whether they be in London or elsewhere, and civil servants, telling us of services we don't need, telling us of how centralisation will solve our problems. We think that's wrong, and we will continue to fight to stop that happening. We will always champion the cause of devolution, powers to the Knisviad, and powers to local government. And if any minister tells me again that we don't need face-to-face -face services because of the growth of the internet, welcome though that is, or because rural service provision costs too much, then we will continue to be thorns in their side. We have a record, a proud record, of fighting for rural communities. We haven't won every battle, but we have had notable successes. We'll continue to make the case for people in Wales, whether they live in urban or in rural communities. But I don't want to talk about clinging to some distant rural way of life, like some characterised as some liberal Luddite, preserving just a bare minimum of services for our towns and our villages. And I represent 147 villages in Keradigion. I suspect my colleagues over there who added up, there's many more hundreds too. I want to talk about a revitalised, energised agenda for rural life. Because there are so many great things going on in our communities. Exciting initiatives that can work across Wales, driven by local people in local communities. I think of Broadband for Kilkenny in my constituency, a group that organised and fought, fought tirelessly to bring broadband to their communities. I think of the Transition Town movement in Aberystwyth and Lampeter, bringing the global environmental challenges of the day to the doorsteps of people in my constituency. I think of Cardigan Chamber of Trade, Mr Mayor, pulling together all the businesses of Cardigan to challenge business rate revaluation. I think of Strata Florida and Tregaron 50 plus groups, bringing otherwise isolated individuals into community campaigning. But it's no good standing against cuts or fighting closures in your constituency if you don't have a positive vision, if you don't have the policies to transform the way in which services are provided. For years we've been talking about the need for post offices to be able to expand their revenue streams while the government has been cutting back on those very contracts. Well, Lord Mandelson finally has decided we were right all along and is now consulting on the services, uh, services uh, that what's left of the post, work, post office network can provide. Though sadly, 2,500 post offices, of course, have had to close before Labour saw the light. I've seen too many communities lose their post office, lose their village shop, lose their pub, because government doesn't understand the needs of rural communities. I will not resist the language of emotion, because believe me, when a village shop goes, the bus stops coming, the pub goes, the garage goes, what incentive are there for young people to live in those villages, to send their children to local schools? The heart is indeed ripped out of those communities. We want to save pubs, not by wishful thinking, 
but by reforming the beer tie, which disadvantages tide pubs, reducing the duty on beer. We want to make it easier for rural businesses. We have more businesses in Kennedy Young than any other constituency in the United Kingdom. Cutting red tape for small businesses, allowing communities to thrive, lifting the threshold of business rates, assisting more businesses, and challenging the time of revaluation for business rates when our businesses are still tragically in recession. A Labour government that forces all new businesses and existing businesses with turnovers of more than £100,000 to register VATs online, VAT online, not allowing them to, not encouraging them to, but forcing them to at a time when we haven't got a complete rollout of broadband across the country. <coughs> Labour, I think that shows how little they understand about the challenges of small businesses. I want a rural Wales where the potential for small businesses to operate unhampered and whose potential can be realised. Where our family farms are freed from excessive red tape, where the monopolistic controls of the supermarkets are indeed broken. We were the only party, and I was the only MP, to initiate the debate on the costly electronic tagging of sheep. And our assembly group were the only group to finally vote against EIT. My friends in Play Cymru tell me, and I have some, <laughs> tell me they are standing up for rural communities. But they have let down West Wales in government. Whether it's reducing business, whether it's reducing bus subsidies while increasing them in urban areas or squeezing local government funding, Plaid have been unable or unwilling to get the best for our rural communities. Dog wagging tail or tail wagging dog, I don't know, but they've let our communities down. I don't want a David health service, unashamedly parochial. I want a Keradigion health service, as we had before. Plyde used to want that too, but they couldn't get it in government. They demanded that our trust headquarters would be in Keradigion. <coughs> Labour put it, them in Haverford West. Indeed, the only concession that Plaid Cymru seemed to have achieved is to name the health board after a 10th century king. <laughs> Unless that was Edwina's <laughs> idea too. <laughs> we want to talk Wales up. We want to give power back to the people. And as Roger said, unashamedly, we are obsessed with the future, not obsessed with the past. I want to see an assembly with full lawmaking powers. Liberal Democrat members of Parliament, yes, we want less power in Westminster because we believe the assembly is best placed to deliver unique Welsh solutions right across the board. And we are not Johnny come lately. I collect political books. He nan said Megan Lloyd George in 1951. We reaffirm that now. We want to see an assembly with greater power so that Kirsty can make Wales the international green centre that it can be. That Lembitz argued for in Montgomeryshire, the facilities at Cat and elsewhere that should be promoted on an all Wales, UK and global level. We want to give rural Wales the support it needs and ensure that healthcare is based on local need, not on Labour's agenda for centralisation. That great pyramidal structure with Mrs Edwina Hart still at the top. Well, what are the other opponents? The spectre, the mere possibility of a Tory Secretary of State and a Tory majority on our select committee, of which I've been proud to serve, should send a shudder down everyone's spine. The spectre of a Tory government in London, diametrically opposed to everything this party stands for, should send a shudder down our spines. We will be launching, we have already started, the great crusade against the party of renewed vacuousness, touched up photos, constant wobbles and opportunism at its worst. Woo! And we will never... reminding people what those Tory years were like before.